Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on August 26th, 2024. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. I'll be starting out here looking at amazing images of our sun for the past two days, brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory, mixed with daily events worldwide. No major solar flares to report nor new coronal mass ejections heading our way. Having a look here, the last two days incoming, there is a sizable sunspot region cresting in on the right-hand side, as well equatorial region plasma filaments there. You can see them lifting from the surface. Looking at outgoing here, multiple C-class solar flares from the nine sunspot regions that are Earth-facing right now. That is moderate solar flare activity. Pointing out here the last 48 hours of events. And as well, cresting in notable activity in regions coming into view. Plasma filament there in the southwest region. And as well, a building, a coronal hole right around the same spot. Definitely regions I will be watching over the next two days. Having another look here at our sun. I want to thank you all for watching, pressing play. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up if you enjoy all of this information shared. Right now, we still have nine sunspot regions that are Earth facing. It's been a few days now. Having a look here at these sunspot regions in motion. Some pretty big players turning away and Earth facing right now. I'm really surprised we haven't seen a stronger flare. Current space weather conditions, we are under R1, which is minor radio blackout impacts. Solar winds are coming in at 325 kilometers per second. Notable, the radio flux coming in at 233 SFU. Solar X-ray flux, as you can see, minor M-class solar flares and heightened C flare activity the past two days. Solar proton flux is low. Geomagnetic activity is low as well, sitting at a KP2 coming into the 27th. Now we are expecting some minor geomagnetic instability tonight and into tomorrow. Having a look here at the Space Weather Prediction Center, you can see there was a small CME projected and will be affecting our planet here late into the 26th and 27th. ISWA Space Prediction Spiral here, showing a CME taking off from the cresting limb of our sun, and as well some activity here outgoing. And that CME is visible on LASCO 3 right now. Something I wanted to share here with you is our sunspot number progression. As right now, for the month of July, we had 196 sunspot regions counted. And that is a pretty strong number. Strongest we've seen in 20 years. We haven't seen anything that like that since back in the early 2000s. 244 for the month of July in the year 2000. But we are now heading into the solar maximum. <clears throat> Excuse me. Solar maximum right here, solar cycle 25. And this is just the beginning, folks. We are already well above the predicted values. And we've seen some very strong solar flare activity. But this right here is our solar maximum. We are on the verge or in it right now. Having a look here at Lasco 3, this is showing the last six hours of imagery. Most recent CME coming from the bottom region of our sun. You can see it just in those last few frames. Right there. Now let's get to earthquakes the past 24 hours as our earth looks like a pin cushion right now. I did see a sizable 6.1 earthquake today. 
or sorry, yesterday, 6.1 and 6.9 in the Tonga region. Another 5.3 today. Notable earthquake here, 2.7 Muswell Brook, Australia. There's been interesting and notable activity coming out of there. 5.6 earthquake here, Indonesia, 60 kilometer depth. Philippines, 5.2 and a 4.6. 4.3 earthquake here, Julian City, Taiwan, off the coast. As well, 4.2 into the Indian plate. 4.5 Greece. And a notable here last night, 5.4 earthquake hitting scenes. Portugal off the coast there of Portugal. Another rare place for an earthquake. 5.8 earthquake here, Boca Chica, Panama. And as well, notable activity here, Dominican Republic. Sizable 4.8 magnitude earthquake at a 40 kilometer depth just south of the island. So they're definitely feeling it today. Chile here, southern Chile 5.0 and as well a 4.6 here. La Ligua, Chile. Not much to talk about across the North American plate. No major swarms to be noted. Svalbard, North Pole, close to the North Pole, reporting a 4.5. And Alaska here, Sandpoint, Alaska, 5.1 magnitude earthquake. Going to be watching this region over the next few days. I've been warning. So, heads up, everybody. Again, no major swarms to talk about. USCS is reporting about 220 earthquakes the past 24 hours, and that is right around average. Quick glance here at the last seven days for shakers around the world, largest being the 6.9 yesterday in Tonga, deepest being the 627 kilometer depth earthquake Fiji, which happened just before the 6.9. This is a look at the last seven days for earthquakes. Never reported earthquakes where I did in Australia over the last couple days. So heads up, we got some big changes on our planet. And it's notable here, having a look at our SO2 forecast. This sulfur dioxide emission blast from the Iceland volcano is massive. Now look at this stretching right up into the North Atlantic around the Bering Strait, and around our northern hemisphere. Very thick particulates sweeping across Europe and Russia over the next few days. Look at this. This is massive. Haven't seen anything like this since the Hunga Tonga eruption back in 2021. We've seen a lot of major volcanic events over the last five years, folks. And this is why I started documenting. This is why I was broadcasting, sharing my passion for weather, but also documenting the changes that I knew were coming to our planet. Right now we have 66 active and or erupting volcanoes across the planet. The most ever reported here with daily events worldwide. I mean, that's seven years. It's not a lifetime, but still, here we are. Now let's have a look at world weather here as we've got some extreme weather and as well lots of moisture heading towards the west coast. High pressure ridge is slipping southward. Cold high pressure ridge in the long range will be sweep, swinging temperatures back into a more average temperature for eastern Canada and the United States. Big low there will be changing things in the long range forecast over Quebec. Low pressure system here in the North Atlantic set to bring lots of moisture here towards Ireland, the United Kingdom over the next few days. And some more Atlantic moisture heading into the long range forecast. Overlooking Australia, Africa, and Southeast Asia. Extreme weather expected here for parts of northern China and as well Japan from the typhoon and some cyclones that are grinding up into both eastern and western India all week long. So 
Watch for extreme weather events and flash floods coming out of India. Leave you here looking at the North Pacific as Hoon has just passed Hawaii and Gilma is on its way. And so was another one behind that. Big systems heading up into Alaska. Stream weather through the Gulf. And it looks like Gilma will diminish before it hits Hawaii. So they've already seen enough rain and wind over the next over the last couple of days from Hurricane Hone. Let's have a look here at our upper level winds. This is our southern polar vortex right now. Upper level winds coming in at 412 kilometers per hour in some regions around the South Pole right now. The winds are picking up. Trade winds are picking up in the north. And this is all about to do a flip-flop. And we will watch this here with daily events worldwide as we head into winter. Yeah, it's a little early to be talking about winter. But fall is just around the corner, and we could see some big changes. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. We'll see you next video. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.